Hi everybody and welcome to Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland webinar for this week. I always get a, a bit of a mouthful when I say that. Uh, so it is great to have you all here and this week we have Diane Buckley who's um, an international spa consultant. Welcome Diane. I'm having a little technical difficulty hearing you Karina so I don't know if you can hear me at the moment. Oh I can hear you. Now I can hear you, my apologies, my apologies. So I, I only had you on uh, your first introduction and then I lost you. Okay, no, no, not to worry. It's, uh, as we just spoke about it, technical difficulties always happen. Um, yeah. No, I was just, I was welcoming you and thank you for joining us. And, thank you. Uh, I, yeah, so uh, we're going to talk today about maintaining client comfort in what we're now calling the new normal. And I guess, you know, um, for, you know, we've been talking an awful lot about the hair industry and the beauty salons and the spa industry is um, kind of coming alive now. And actually, Diane, just before um, I came on there, I've read something, um, I don't know if you saw it yet, the, there's been a new survey published um, by, I think, spa.ie with the Irish Spa Association, where they, they kind of surveyed 2,500 beauty salons and spas and they're saying that, you know, it looks like there's going to be a bit of a boom for the industry in the post-COVID, um, you know, whatever you want to call it, uh, new normal or uh, post-COVID environment, um, which is great news. They, they, I just read out to you there, I don't know if you saw it, um, it uh, they just said that they, the results are very encouraging that 97 percent uh, of people will be happy to get manicures done, 95 percent will return for massage, 90 percent will feel comfortable having facials and eye treatments, and 76 percent will return to uh, thermal facilities like pools, saunas and steam rooms when spas reopen. So I think, you know, as we talked the other day, um, the hairdressers opened first and it's kind of spas are kind of opening. It's I suppose it's up to every individual business as they go along, but they are starting to from now really I think from this week on. So what we're you and I are going to talk about today is how we are you know the industry keeps the the, the client comfort in this this new normal. So what I wanted to start off by asking you was, you know, with spas being synonymous with relaxation. How do you make sure that this is maintained in the new post-COVID space? Yeah, I think that's a very valid question. You know, change this change that we've had is unsolicited, and um, an unsolicited change always causes a great amount of stress. But we're actually positioned in an industry where the whole premise and the belief around our industry is about giving people a sense of wellness and and creating a very comfortable, relaxed environment. So we're naturally equipped with the ability to deliver client care. And it's as yeah. simple as getting back to those basic fundamentals. Um, I suppose when you look um, at the last recession and coming out of the last recession, everyone had to kind of fight for their space and, and fight for their share of a customer spend. And those that really rose to the top are those that got back to basics. Good treatment, good customer care, and value for money. So we take those principles and we bring them forward again. And we focus on, I suppose, for me, the primary thing is client care. When we deliver efficient and, I suppose, gold standard client care, we're putting the client's needs ahead all of the time. And I suppose trying to look ahead to see what their needs would be. So as, as a consultant going in, if I'm assisting a spa to set themselves up in order to deliver that type of service now, I'm going back to basics again. And we're making sure that the, the staff internally have fundamental understanding of how their spa operates and what the standards that they have to deliver now are and how to move around the spa fluidly. I suppose by nature, we've always, you know, moved around like swans when we could be absolutely trucking ahead at full speed and we create and deliver a sense of relaxation. To me, nothing has changed in that regard. It's about back to basics, client communication, client care. And sometimes we might need to regroup so that we're all on the same sounding board and having the same discussions. But I think it is as simple as that. Great. Um, and actually that whole, the, what you were saying there about, you know, the, the, the essence of the industry is about that caring, you know, 
this mm-hmm. environment. Um, that's part of you know the, that survey that was done. What they were saying within the survey was that um, there's actually it looks like there's going to be a, even more of a demand in the wellness and self care sector from clients mm-hmm. in after the pandemic. If you get me, it's kind of absolutely. like absolutely you're all craving that space. And and even the connection, craving the connection with another individual. And I think the most important message to send out to the industry, whether it's beauty or spa, is that the conversations they're having with their clients are client-focused and not COVID-focused. And that's the one thing that is very important. And even if they're communicating with them, that it's done on a very positive premise. Because just yesterday I was going through my own main street here and there's a really beautiful salon there. But there was a sign outside the door and the first word you saw was stop. (laughs) You know, you know, you you shouldn't have to fight that hard to scare away your customers. Stop up at the door. And I just thought, you know, they're the, they're the slips that we can make because obviously we're being fed information that we all nationally have to adhere to around COVID restrictions and realities. And we're taking those on board, but we can't lose our sense of identity as to who we are in spas and customer care. But I couldn't agree with you more. People are absolutely craving engagement and treatments. They see yeah. the value in them. But there will be a fight for where you'll spend your money because there, there, there is going to be a degree of, my discerning spend and where I'll spend my money and where I'll, my money will be most valued. And I think that all the businesses out there have to see that what they're offering has to be above and beyond the norm at this stage. Okay, great. And then just, I suppose, getting down to the, the kind of almost nitty gritty, gritty of it. Mm-hmm. Um, PPE, obviously, yeah. PPE is now a part of our everyday life. Yeah. How, how do you think people can blend PPE with, with what has traditionally been, you know, beautiful surroundings? <laughs> this is it. And I mean, there is going to be a challenge, but I suppose, that, so I looked at it both ways because I, I did put a bit of thought into this. And, you know, one of the tragedies, I suppose, around the whole um, PPE thing is if people's faces are, are blocked and screened. Yeah. You, you're losing the personable welcome. And I, when I'm doing training for spas, I'm always talking about your body language and your body language being open. And now if this is all you can see, yeah, it can be a little disconcerting. And even for ourselves as consumers in other areas, it, it's a little off-putting when you can't get that, you know, that response. And I think yeah. fundamentally as Irish people, we're very much about our, our animation and our engagement. But the only thing I will say is we're all in the same boat, no matter where you go and what you do, we're all in that same reality. So it's not an onus that's solely been set upon the beauty and the spa and the hair industry. This onus is set across all sectors, whether it's your physio, your dentist, your doctor. There's protocol. So I suppose the community is going to have to adjust. We can't take the sole responsibility on ourselves and try and tweak it so it doesn't exist because it is a fundamental reality that it does however i suppose what we have to do in order to compensate for that is to make sure that our our client care verbally and signage wise is very much guiding and governance and caring but it is it is an unusual situation and i know i've had people ask me how they can be creative about it and is there such thing as a see-through mask and you know Uh, are we are we just going too far in that, as I said, it's a shared reality. So our consumer takes comfort in it and, and, and we as professionals, it, it, it is an adjustment. I will say wearing them is an adjust, adjustment for any length of time. So I suppose as proprietors or employers, we need to be mindful of our team as well. And, you know, that they would need those appropriate breaks from it. But from an environmental change and from, I suppose, a luxury or an expectation, it's, it's, it's a, re- a reality. And I don't think yeah. there's anything that we can do a- about that. And actually, just on, on that topic of the face mask, is there such a thing as a see-through one? Well, I, haven't seen I heard a whisper that a hotel that I might have worked, worked on in a project not so long ago, which will remain nameless right now, is currently trying to outsource um, a, a see-through mask. But I was thinking, I don't know, I don't know. But, you know, I suppose like anything, what we have to remember, and, and, and right through the lockdown, um, when I was mentoring and just trying to keep people relaxed and focused, is this is our reality today. 
This is yeah. where we are today to bridge to where we need to go to safeguard ourselves, our businesses and the future. This is not a forever ask and it will evolve and it will change, change will come. And I suppose if, if nothing else out of it, if, if, if it raises the other senses. So for example, you know, if you're hearing impaired and your other senses are more heightened, okay, we've lost one directive of communication and support for our clients. How are we heightening the other senses? You know, and it raises the bar. You know, what are our therapists saying? How are they communicating with clients? How are we directing? What is our customer journey like? How proficient are we in all of those areas? But again, it's like, I kept going back to it. It's, it's change. Through change comes stress, through stress comes rise and fall. And it's those of us that stay calm and focused, client focused, the value will come and the, and the results will come. Yeah, uh, and I, I, I think I was saying that on another webinar a couple of weeks ago, that, that whole um, idea of change, that you know, change is inevitable in life anyway, and what, it's, it's about how you adapt to it um, and how you respond rather than react and all of that thing yeah absolutely and you know in in times of change it does allow i mean the one thing i thought that was very valuable about our lockdown situation was is it allowed us to stand back look at our businesses see what we liked what we didn't like where the yeah. value was and where there was no value it allowed us to root through all the cobwebs we never get a chance to get into in daily operations and say right this is how we're going forward and I've worked with some amazing people over the last few months who really have made change to the point even that they're safeguarding and future proofing their businesses by going online. And a lot of the feedback from spas was we can't go online. How can we go online? But like, of, course yeah. can. of course you can communicate with your clients and give freely and give information. And, you know, I, I do believe that brilliant people and brilliant professionals share information freely because they've always got more to give. And yeah. even around how you engage with your clients, your questionnaires, you know, giving them their home care tips. Are you emailing your clients, you know, 10 good things to do this week for your wellness, you know? And it's really yeah. about inventive. It's about being inventive. Yeah, going forward, yeah. yeah. Um, and just, you, you touched on it there um, a while ago about signage. You know, I wanted to ask you yeah. what the best way to you know obviously the signage has to be there for health and safety purposes but Absolutely. you know finding a way that it isn't intrusive to yeah. the otherwise you know tranquil surroundings and, and you know what absolutely and it's amazing everyone went yellow everywhere you go there's yellow yeah. and if i see the word stop again i'll probably faint it is, it is signage yeah there's always been this balance actually and this difficulty in the beauty and the spa industry where signage, okay, it's, it's fundamental purpose historically was to be directive, left, yeah. right, men's, ladies, you know, and you, you, you were confident in your footfall that you were going the right direction. So now we've got an added element of health and safety to it where we are encouraging people to obviously to sanitize and, and what's involved. I think the most important thing is again, and it comes right back to communication, that it's done softly, softly. So it's like if you if you're trying to deliver, I suppose, even in training, the don'ts never work. Don't do this, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. Yeah. It creates a negative response. And this isn't something that, that's new. This is known and understood. And it's how we commute communicate things to remind people it's it's for your welfare so i think again it's followed up by the therapist we're in the caring and minding business particularly in spas and the movement around spas for your safety is far better than don't when you're opening a sentence and i think it's as simple as that you do have your your station set up quite freely they have to be visible we don't have a choice in in that um, and I think it's a fundamental reality but it's security right now yeah security right now and it's the ease of it and and you know the funny thing is I, I went into a physio myself yesterday and you know you get your advanced text message which was really good and it was very kind of reassuring please sanitize your hands when you come in so I came in the door and I looked for the sanitizer and I couldn't see it you know and then eventually I found it but the thing is, I suppose our, the onus and responsibility is for us to take away all the stress for our clients so that everything is visible and simple. The one thing I would advise spas greatly is do not overfill your signage with heavy 
um, dialogue and instructions. An instruction in one space is enough. Um, I don't know if you've been noticing that um, in the, the obviously there, is, there isn't a great deal of spas open yet at the moment. They're mostly day spas because a lot of the traditional spas are adjacent to hotels and a lot yeah. of hotels will not open to the 17th. So um, out of choice, they've just decided that's their critical yeah. path to opening. But I, I have noticed that signage is quite text heavy. And this, you know, that can be quite distressing when you're trying to walk in a door, you're just at the door, you've got to read all of this information. So keep it simple, keep it directive and keep it positive. I mean, that's, that's the best we can do. Yeah, it, it, I think it helps as well. Now I'm only going on the experience of shops um, that I've been in in the last, well, particularly in the last week. It helps when there's a human being. A hundred percent. Adding the guidance because, 100%. you know, you're coming along and you're like, I don't know where I'm supposed to go, but if someone is actually standing there Absolutely. and they, they're telling you, this is where you sanitize your hands, if you could just do that there and then keep going this direction. It, and it also gives that personal touch. Well, and this is it. And, you know, and as I said, we're in the caring business. If we can't do it, yeah. <laughs> we can't do it. Well, nobody can. But it is that. And I suppose, again, it's about getting it into the balance of, of being and welcoming actually welcoming people yeah. we're craving it i know i'm craving it myself going out um having the stop you know the hand up stop stand yeah. go you know we're craving the nurture welcome thank you for coming thank you and and i think we have a responsibility in the industry to thank our consumers for coming back to us thanking them for supporting us because they're taking i suppose they're taking a leap of faith with, with us really that we are going yeah. to support their welfare. And I commend the beauty and hair industry for what they've done in everything that's come out of Havoc, everything that's come out um, in support wise from the Irish Spa Association. They've really set up guidelines of support. So you take the supports, which you make it your own. You have to use your own dialogue and soften the corners a little. They just yeah. keep, keep it relative to where you are. Um, and, and I think, I think that's the key and I couldn't agree with you more. You know, we're in the people business at the end of the day. Yeah. Having a person, a kind of a, a nominated person to do yeah. the greeting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I suppose that, that is half answer to my next question anyway, yeah. but leading on, um, to that, um, around, you know, I was going to ask you about, you know, how do you introduce clients to the different space when they're craving the comfort of what used to be so familiar, I suppose, returning clients in particular, you know, if you've got regular people coming back, it's like, how do you literally show them this is the way we are now? <laughs> well, you know, it's all around the welcome, I think, and how we, see this, the physical spaces stay the same. I, I know the reality is that we have, we'll have less people in the environment and they, they probably will probably have a sense of loneliness <laughs> initially because a lot of spas, the turnovers were so tight that the, traditionally the, the task was to create a sense of calm in a busy day where we're kind yeah. of out to a point now where people are getting a welcome and a sense of time. What I would say to spas is, I think they need, and it was in the article that I wrote for you recently, I think they need to look at their physical space, first of all, and look at yeah. them and see, okay, you've got revenue and non-revenue producing areas. And traditionally, we wanted more revenue producing areas, but revenue producing areas are, are, are therapist directed. So that's hands-on treatments, that's um, turnover situations, you know, direction and thermal suites. Where have you in your business that's, that is, is a traditionally non-revenuing space, but adds to the customer journey. So they're yeah. your station areas, they're your little quiet spots, maybe your reading spots. I think there might need to be a sense of look at it again and look at how you move your client around your spa. Look at how they can enjoy free, tranquil time and add to your comforts. Um, I think that we have to be a little bit more creative. The reality is things have changed because certain things are restricted that we can't have numbers in, we can't have couples having treatments at the same time. The, 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 I, even the treatment menus, I believe, are quite restricted. It's going base by, or case by case. Um, mm -hmm. there is no, there's no consistency to the, the amount of time that people are offering treatments. But 
I think it's really going to be the directed and the non-directed use of your spa. How are you using it? And if you can use your outdoors, are you being inventive and creative? I think the nostalgia of the past experience in essence is going to be difficult to recreate. I think all we can give them 100% is ourselves, the same level of client care and the same level of treatment delivery. And the most important thing, which I'm going to say again, is to make the conversation about the client and not about COVID. You yeah. Know, bring them back to treatments and bring them back to wellness and bring them back to what we do. Um, that's, that's, in my opinion, the most important, I suppose, tool in their in their kit that they can they can use to try and bring yeah. the sense of the therapist yeah because i suppose there's a way of, of you know talking about covid as well that, that it doesn't necessarily have to be the the horror side or whatever because you know i was i was actually saying it to somebody the other day that um i'm not sure if i said it to you that um i'm finding you know now that we're, we're emerging from lockdown and we're meeting people that we haven't seen in ages you know the way before before you would have said to somebody, how was your Christmas? Now right. you're saying, how was, how was your COVID? <laughs> how was your pandemic? You know, how did you get on? And it's like, but it, that's a very human conversation as well. That's not to, that's yeah. not to focus on the awfulness of the illness. It's Absolutely. kind of focus on, well, what did you do with your time? And, you know, and a lot of, a lot of, yeah, and where where was the value and where is the fun and what did you learn? And I mean, I met some truly amazing people who would put me to shame who were on seminars morning, noon and night. They were on upskilling left, right and center. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and the amount of energy and the study and the interest and Milton, I mean, Milton were emailed so many times by therapists out there wanting to know the exact dilutions. And I just, you know, I, it, it's a lovely message to share to the public the level of effort and care that anyone that I touched with throughout the process in the industry, whether that's hair, beauty or spa, have given it socks to yeah. bring everything back to standard. And, you know, maybe, you know, maybe there's an upside to everything. Maybe it'll just call the ones that aren't as committed to that client care because the one thing Karina we have to remember is we've always been good at sanitization we've always yeah. been good at sterilization we've always been good at consultations so it's it's fluid for us to just apply these things but it's the conversation yeah the conversation and bringing people back to the treatment and the magic and even the even you know even the therapists that are nervous and this, I was on to someone yesterday and she said her team were really nervous about having hands on again because they haven't worked for a few months. And yeah. they themselves were even nervous as to how, you know, to get back to that level of proficiency again in treatment. So yeah, it, it's, uh, it's an interesting, an interesting one. Yeah. yeah. You spend your COVID. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was your last time. Um, and just around the, I suppose what you were talking there about the, you know, some treatments are probably going to come back straight away and maybe more of them will be slower to come back. And, you know, I wanted to ask you about, you know, how do you, the, the therapists give the same level of nurture um, mm -hmm. when there's strict measures to be adhered to? Now, I mean, I don't know myself. Are there some things in terms of the treatment menu that like for, for now will be off? treatment menu until yeah, we I, more think, I think there are I think there are um, and really you see this is, again is where everyone has been looking to the organizations whether it's the Irish Spa Association or Havoc looking for them for guidelines on treatments yeah. and everything that's come out all along has been yes this is how you mind you in your facility this is how you do your payment treatments or, or yeah. procedures rather but nobody's been talking about this is how you can do your 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 um, treatment menu and what level of it you can do. So yeah. what, look, what we've actually seen at the beginning is um, people have put their training wheels on. That's, I've seen that right across the board. So the training wheels have gone on and they're keeping it to the most simplest of procedures where they can easily turn the space over, sanitize it 100% and yeah. have this client in but also trying to balance the, the, the bank statement and keep the revenue coming in. What we've seen is people moving away from um, any of the, the type of machines, 
um, particularly say in spas, they, they're, they're a little bit more cautious around the thermal areas. They're a little bit more cautious around the baths because of the, the level of turnover in time. Yeah. Well, and any of the research that I've done into it, any of your standard procedural sanitizations and sterilization procedures cover you for COVID. But it really comes down to your confidence level and the time spend that you want to have. And I think you and I touched on this um, when we were speaking is that there's no degree of standard on the length of time across other sectors. So we're looking at our sector. And we're talking about hair salons. So my local hair salon will only do highlights and color at the moment. And right. So there's no uh, other procedures being done. If you're in for a highlight and a color, I'm, I'm sure you'll get a cut, but I can't book a haircut at the moment and, 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 and go in that they've decided that's how their menu is going to operate. Right. So we look across the different industries. You go to your physiotherapist. They're trying to limit hands on to 20 minutes and the rest is your consultation hands out yeah. and then your prescriptive um, exercises and so forth. Right, you jump over to um, the bars that are opening, that are serving food and they're allowing you to stay in the space for an hour and 45 minutes. So it's, it's where do we sit in all of it? And I think it really is just about being mindful and safe. And I think really what I know with any of the industry people that I've been talking to that are opening up their treatments, they want to get their therapists working. They want the hands-on therapies delivered first, obviously spread out, occupancy spread out, rosters spread out, um, and they're trying to survive the first few months, probably, we hope, the next two months on a, on a more skeleton menu. But then I can't see why the menu can't come back to full fruition. Yeah. Everyone's afraid of making the mistake. And I think because of that, Everyone's being cautious about what you can and cannot have. But, you know, I suppose to the public, I would love to see the public supporting the businesses that are set up like that, that are looking to the likes of the Irish Spa Association and Havoc for support. So, yeah, um, you know, it's, it's a hard to answer because for every expert I speak to, they have a different directive. You know, yeah. um, you, you have directives coming saying that there should be no longer than 15 minutes in a treatment room. Well, let's be honest, that means spas can't open. Yeah. There is yeah. no in a treatment in a spa. Your fundamental is a one hour, the whole business model is based on a one hour turnover. It's a difficult ask. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's not fast food. <laughs> it doesn't work like and that. that. And, and that's the thing. But I mean, I, you know, I, I treated... The, the crew yesterday to McDonald's, but I could only have a certain amount of the menu. And I'm like, why? Are you, <laughs> I, don't, I just don't understand it. But, you know, that's just every, every industry seems to have its security blanket at the moment of how they're coping with the reality. Yeah, and I suppose if, if they keep it simple, then, you know, you can control what's coming down and, you know, and what's coming down the track, you know. But yeah. look, I've been saying it to everyone, pre-book your clients, rebook your clients. Yeah, very important. You know, and then just finally, um, you know, if there's a, if you know, I think I, I mentioned this to you. If there's a possibility of losing something in one area, is there an opportunity to create something in another area? Yeah, well, you know, I think there is. I think there is, and I think it's about looking at what you're offering traditionally. Those I think that live on the cusp of spa, and when I say the cusp of spa, is to be a true spa, you should be able to spend time. Time yes. has always been something we've offered clients, whether that's in the thermal area, a relaxation area, and then obviously the treatments are built around that. The businesses that live on the cusp of that are, are treatment delivery based only. So they traditionally would be day spas where, you know, the turnover is coming in. There's a crossover into the beauty industry more. I think they will have to make a decision where they're going to sit in the short term. The spas that have the relaxation I want them to look at their facilities. How are you engaging wellness back into your business? I'm not jumping on the wellness bandwagon. It's something that has really been the fundamental of spa for a very long time, wellness. And that's mindfulness, wellness, relaxation, and how we actually can give that to our clients. And mm -hmm. it might mean, it might mean re-educating a portion of the team to be able to bring that holistic element of, of wellness into it. But I mean, something that, people find very, I, I do myself, how do you sit down? How do you, how do you stop, right? Mm -hmm. In our normal worlds, and 
COVID was an educator on that. So we're all at home. You know, once we got rid of the tissues and decided the world wasn't going to end and we were going yeah. to, back to work and we were going to see how we could give value. We remodeled how we gave value and all my work went online. It's been amazing because I can work with people that I don't have to drive eight hours to meet. It's fantastic. Yeah. But, you know, how inventive are we and how creative are we? But one thing I ran out of every day was time. Nowhere to be alone, nowhere to rest, nowhere for silence, nowhere for meditation. It was like, because you were in this nut shell the whole time. So where do we want to go to get that? There isn't an awful lot of it out there unless you're going to go walking in the woods or yeah. whatever to find yourself. So the spas have an opportunity here of actually looking at their physical spaces and saying, how can I do this? I mean, it's something as simple as doing guided meditation on a headphone to allow a client to sit peacefully in an area when they have to relearn how to relax properly and how yeah. to do this. Because definitely, even though we've all slowed down and we've got our, you know, I suppose our new values in life and what we, we love and we like, there's been a great deal of stress. And yeah. I know the massage therapists are definitely going to be busy. The stress that we've all taken on and an outlet to rest and relax. And those spas that look to that and how they can give that and put a value on it, there, there needs to be a value. So there needs to be a treatment around that. And, and for me, I think the one that's been really missing out there is guided meditation. And that can be pre-recorded. Okay. Um, yeah, because I, I think you're, you're right there. I know we were touched on it briefly the other day when we were talking that, you know, the, the whole three months, or it was probably over three months of the lockdown, you know, it did force everybody to stop and, you know, we weren't all running around. We, we had yeah. to move at a different pace and stuff and that's all well and good. But like, I really do believe that like people have carried stress Huge. forward from it. Yeah. It's like when we were going through it in the very sort of intense period, I think we all just adapted and got on with it. And now yeah. people are feeling quite stressed and well, also... The stress is coming out of the lockdown. Absolutely, and that's what I was going to say. I mean, even with the businesses, okay, and even for myself, when the shutdown happened, I mean, I just thought, oh my God, am I still going to have my car in three months? You know, yeah. because, you know, are we shut down forever? Will they ever open again? And it was just, yeah. but then the calm, the calm ensues, and then you go back and you go, you've got your fundamentals, and we've all worked on that. But the one thing that the people I've been working with um, over the last few months, they had a, a nervousness about reopening. Yeah. And the nervousness wasn't even just about, will they have customers again? It was everything. It was all the stress that was brought forward, all the anxiety, because, you know, who's been equipped for a pandemic? Yeah. You know? <laughs> To be fair, I mean, who's equipped for it? And I think people are worried. They're worried about their incomes. They're worried about their children. They're worried about their work. And the one thing I struggled with, and, and it's something I would have been quite good at, is meditation, mindfulness, being present. Yeah. Very difficult to be present when you have fear. And, you know, it's something it's shared so equally amongst us all that we really, if we hone into that and offer that support and person-to-person -person support in spas, giving people the, I suppose, the skills again to relax, to rest, to mind themselves, um, and to stop giving space. And I always say it's just giving space. space. Yeah. Spas, spas have the ability to do that. Um, not only that, but salons have the ability to make people, you know, it's just even getting your hair done, whether it's getting your hair done or having a facial or getting your eyebrows done. It brings you back to feeling, I suppose, minded again. Yeah. Kind of self-care and everyone has their own level of self-care and, and where they place their value in that. But it's just, I think the industry should really understand the value it has around mental wellness. It, it, you know, it's a big word, I know, yeah. but it's just, it's engagement, it's self-care, it's, the skills of being present and, and tapping back into what our industry was about in the beginning. Okay. Okay. That's, um, that's all lovely and very positive. And um, I hope as well that, you know, the industry benefits from the idea that like we're all being encouraged perhaps not to go abroad. Yeah. And holiday yeah. at home. Absolutely. And, you know, why not, you know, instead of, you know, doing your two weeks in Spain or wherever you would normally go, maybe yeah. go and have, go take a spa break for yourself. Absolutely. And I really hope that happens. And, you know, and again, just to the professionals out there, 
um, the one thing when it comes to customer care training that I do all of the time is say to the people, the public are not the enemy here. Be, be prepared for people to be a little bit more stressed and yeah. a little less understanding about change. Yeah. Because, you know, they're now coming into your world and it's changed. You have to move like a swan and pretend it doesn't bother you at all, even though you might be trying to cope with that reality yourself. Yeah. But just be nurturing to your customers because they'll remember that. Exactly, yeah. You know, they'll remember that. Okay, so thank you, Diane, for joining us. That was all very informative. Um, yeah, and um, we will see you again, hopefully, in the flesh this time. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, I know, I know. It's, it's, uh, it's so interesting. It's, it, it definitely, it, Zoom has helped greatly to be able to see p people and engage, but there's nothing like meeting. Uh, exactly, yeah, so yeah, hopefully, slowly but sure, we'll, we'll get back to that. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for joining us. And we will be back again next week at the same time. Uh, we will be talking to Niall Rafferty from iTech um, um, along the topic of, again, health and safety, um, but I suppose more from a training angle. So thank you again, Diane, for joining thank us. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye, thank everybody. Bye-bye.